if you say you're tired, no, you're not tired. Your mind's telling you you're tired. Whatever you tell your mind is what it is, all right? Your mind is the most powerful thing ever, and without it, you're never getting anywhere. And fundamentally, I do this because I love these conversations. Oh, of I love Listen, me too. The, the freaks and the weirdos and the people like you, like me, like hundred over a hundred guests I've had on this show that are like, and my, what I'm trying to do is show the world. Like, if you're like this, you're not alone. You might be unique, but you're not alone. There's actually a big enough group. And, and it's like Steve Jobs says, right? The ones that are crazy enough to think they can change the world, the ones that actually do it. Like yep. it's actually, not only is it okay to be this way. And I feel like there's some kid out there that thinks there's something wrong with them. And they yep. need to hear this. Like, not only is it okay, like it's actually exactly what the world needs. Can you imagine a world that didn't have people like you? Uh, listen, I, I agree with you 1 million percent. And, you know, obviously I have a podcast too, which I'm definitely going to have you on now as well. Cause you know, and we're going to do stuff together. I'm more than happy to help you with your, your, your coaching. I'm, I, I, you know, we're going to have a relationship now. And that's why I love doing these podcasts. But look, at the end of the day, <laughs> People need to know it's okay. And it's really, honestly, I really love what you said because it's so true. You know, I get a lot of DMs on, on uh, Instagram a lot with young kids reaching out to me and saying they want to do this. Where do I start? You know, I have all these crazy ideas and I do, you know, the things I do, people tell me I'm crazy. You just start. You know, people think you need to have this business plan. I never started my business with a business plan ever, ever. I just started. That was it. You just have to do it. People don't understand that. And people, people really really, really make too much, there, there, you know, there's too much thoughts going into when should I start this? How do I do? You're going to make mistakes. You know, my good friend always says WTF. You have to be willing to fail. You have to. Failure is a very big component to success. And you have to, and that's why I always talk about mindset, because you have to be able to handle it. Like you have to be handling people suing you, people screwing you over, people stealing money, people lying to you. I could sit here for hours telling you about every single thing that's going to occur in business. Like I'm getting sued right now. Yeah, listen, listen, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. I got someone who I took care of very closely. I mean, very closely on my team, served me with a lawsuit that they're pretty much that you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning than winning these. I actually ended up winning it because my records are so tight and I'll never forget the day I got served. I was actually just smiling. And like someone in my office was like, Josh, why are you smiling? You got served with a lawsuit. I said, you know what? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't, I don't let those things bother me. People say what keeps you up at night. Nothing, okay. nothing keeps me up at night. I have learned over years how to separate it. I don't, I don't consume these thoughts in my mind. As, as crazy as this may sound, and, and, and I suffered I suffered with this horribly for almost 11 years, making payroll literally every single week, like every single week. I mean, when I'm talking pain, like Jeff, I literally went to a casino once and I almost put my life savings, obviously on red, red's our color, just mm -hmm. to make payroll. I have like, I didn't end up doing it, but like I have, I have suffered. And honestly, there's been times where I've need 30, 40 grand. And I used to just, honestly, and you're going to relate to this. I would just say, yeah, it's all good. Don't worry. You know, my accounting manager is having a heart attack, you know, and it always worked out. It always works out. How'd you, how'd you kind of come up with this idea? It's such a novel twist on the fitness concepts. Yes. I appreciate that. We are, we are the largest personal training franchise in the world. And um, I started this in my parents' dining room in 2008 with a laptop and a vision. And it really all started because, you know, these are actual stats about almost 85, 90% of people drive to work Monday morning committing spiritual suicide. They hate their job. They're miserable. It's also another stat that people spend three to four hours per day working on non-work related tasks. And here I am. I went to college, which I had my thoughts on and um, took a nine to five job. I left being a very successful personal trainer. I left that job to take this job for $40,000 a year. It's like 35 and change, whatever. Yeah. And I was making high six figures. Now you think that'd be crazy, right? But I, but the thing is training, being a trainer is not scalable, but here right. I am, you know, in this miserable environment, everyone's negative, right? Like, you know, you're tired. If you say you're tired, no, you're not tired. Your mind's telling you you're tired. Whatever you tell your mind is what it is. All right. Your mind is the most powerful thing ever. And without it, you're never getting anywhere. And, um, you know, I just said, look, let me go back to where my passion is. I love fitness. I started from scratch, had to build up all my clients all over again. One day, one of my clients came in late and said, Josh, I wish you can come to my house. I just don't have any equipment. And I was like, wow, 
This is like one of those ideas where it's like, why didn't I think it is? How great would it be if I got a vehicle, you know, a van stocked it with all the necessary equipment, enough equipment to provide you a fantastic workout, 365 days a year, backed by our three C's, convenient, customized, and creative workouts. And honestly, service clients anywhere from their home office, pool park, place of worship, hospital, senior homes, corporations, you name it. We bring the work out to you. And we started franchising in 2014. We currently have over 250 locations. We're in 31 states and three countries. We're about to enter our next two countries. Hmm. And, um, you know, great things are happening. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, it's funny. Yeah, 2008, that's when I, I made my pivot. I was a musician, but about right. And it was the same year. It was a tough time to start a business, right? I mean, the, the world was in a, a shit storm in 2008. Listen, there's never a tough time to start anything. You know, people like to, you know, put themselves in, in, in these categories that it's a tough time. No, it's all on you. The problem is social media has, has caused such a, a, a challenge because people like to look at other people. Like, stop focusing on other people. Yeah. Focus on yourself. Yeah. And honestly, you, you want to say it's a bad time? It's a bad time. There's, there's never a bad time. OK, doesn't matter who's the president, doesn't matter, you know, what's going on in the world. You know, listen, I don't want to come across insensitive like, you know, we obviously are going through a pandemic. But if it's not the pandemic, it's something else. And at the end of the day, one thing, winners are always going to win. They're never going to stop winning. But for me, you know, I came up with the idea and I said, I'm just going to absolutely crush it. And I spent literally the, the only money I had saved up and I left myself with $1,500 just to be able to survive for two weeks. And I said, do or die, right? I have no choice. If I don't make this work in two weeks, it's over. And I had enough clients to start covering my expenses. And, you know, I remember I had like, I don't know, seven, eight, nine clients I got. And now, you know, we've, we've topped over a hundred thousand. It's crazy. You know, that's amazing. Uh, and you're right. There, there's never a, a bad time to start a business. There's also never a good time to start a business because you know what? Starting a business is not a good time. It's, hard ass there. work. It's not a good time until you're one of those overnight successes that everybody's talking about 10 years later or whatever. Yep. Um, okay. <laughs> so, but you know, a lot of people start businesses. A lot of people become self-employed owner operators. They have an idea, you know, personal training. It's not a new idea. Probably yep. going to people's houses to personal train in some way isn't a new idea, yep. but somehow you are able to, uh, you know, get some, some exponential traction with that. That's very unusual, right? You're the largest fitness franchise in the world. So how, what, not fitness, not fitness, personal training. Sorry. Sorry. Personal yeah. training. Yeah. <laughs> Good to be clear on that. Yeah. But, um, well, let me actually rephrase that yet, yet. <laughs> Boom. Love it. So, okay. So how do you go from, cause I mean, I can see you building up a nice clientele, maybe you got 20, 40, 50 clients, right? You're probably making good right. money, but at some point you had to get somebody else to bite off your idea and to take a chance. Like what was the process of turning it from your business into, and I, I imagine it wasn't a franchise right away, but something that you could modularize and other people could participate in. And then ultimately you could franchise. So, you know, being a trainer is just not, not, it's not, it's not a scalable role, right? You right. know, you can't, you can't be a trainer forever and you're not, you know, what are you to train people when you're 80, 90 years old, you want to be retired living the life, you know? So for me, I looked at, personal trainers as doctors, right? Doctors without patients are unemployed and trainers without clients are unemployed. So, you know, no one's ever been able to professionalize this model and we've created a new category. So all the people that talk about the overnight success 10 years, you're looking at a whole different timeline because, you know, I went from being super successful in my own business like this to start franchising, to going like this, using my company to fund the other company and start that whole you know, that whole entire timeline all over again, you know, to create scalability and create a model that other people can replicate. But um, it involves a lot of pain, right? And I think the biggest problem people have is you have two types of mindsets. You have a fixed mindset and you have a growth mindset. And people who don't have the growth mindset are never going to get anywhere in their life. Look, I... I do a lot of crazy things on a daily basis that most people would never do. And, and I, don't really like, I don't like doing all of them but I do like doing things I don't like to do, if that makes sense to you. Because I like to put myself in a lot of uncomfortable situations, whether it's sitting in my 25 degree ice bath every day. And I live in New York, we have a, we had a blizzard yesterday, we have over two feet of snow. And this morning, what did I do? The same thing I did yesterday and the day before, and three months ago, sat in my 25 degree ice bath for three minutes every single day. You, you have to do things that you don't like doing 
in order to get comfortable and to build up your mindset to be able to handle situations that are going to be thrown at you because being in business is very dirty and a lot of things are going to happen and people don't see the inside because people like to project on social media like everything's wonderful that's not true you know i don't know a single entrepreneur that consumes large doses of social media and and especially that consumes social media and thinks it actually reflects any part of the reality of of growing a business like not one. It's true. It, it's um, it's, it's very and, true. And I'm so with you. You know, as some, I produce a lot of social media content, but Same. like I'm the dealer, not the user. I refuse to consume that shit. I don't consume it either, man. Because I, I, I think my stuff is the best of the worst, but it's still social media content. Like, go build something. <laughs> Listen, I hear you. You know, what I don't understand is people like try to send you messages like I can do this for you or I could do that. Or, you know, I'd love to be on your podcast. You know, I love, you know, I want to be, a, uh, I want to be a motivational speaker. What have you done? There's no credibility. Right. Like you have to, you have to build credibility. Like, you know, it's, it, it, it takes a very long time. You have to be very patient and people think you could be motivated every day. People say, Josh, man, you're so motivated every day. No, I have good energy. Motivation is impossible to have every day. It's called discipline. You brush your teeth twice a day. Well, I hope so, right? Well, you should be doing the same thing with your business and your life every day. It's got to be consistent every single day. Amen, man. And and you know, if, if you, I don't know how much you know about my business, but we teach entrepreneurship, and I mean, this is the stuff we talk about, probably ad nauseum. I mean, some people probably are like Jeff, shut up with the mindset, let go of the values. Enough with the habits and the discipline. Can't you just teach me how to make money? Yeah, they don't like, get it. I am teaching you how to make money. Yep. It's habits and discipline and values and mindset, right? Um, okay, so you're you, I'm me. We probably resonate on a lot of things. But the reality is we're both weirdos. Most people aren't like us. Most people, yep. and I say they're not like us. I'm not saying fundamentally they're different from us. We all have DNA, but like they've been brought up and bought into a certain channel of thought. Yep. We're kind of over here, like the, in the weirdo category. How did you get so weird? I want to know. Like, I, I love asking entrepreneurs, like, yeah, how did you I, get this way? I, I don't, I, th I honestly don't think <laughs> if you're not weird, I can't, I don't even associate with my, like, I, I don't have, I have very few friends, very, very few friends that I can call. Like, you know, I have a lot of acquaintances, but like right. really close friends. I just, people don't understand me and people think I'm crazy, you know, but weird is in my book is normal. You know, and, you know, I like to build relationships with people like we spoke about Evan and other people, because these are the type of people that that inter I get entertained by because they get it. Most people don't get it, you know, like and, and, and I always like to compare fitness to entrepreneurship, because when you look at someone on an entrepreneur level who's extremely fit and in good shape, you know that they're able to handle pain. Yeah. And that's a definitely, that's definitely a person you don't want to mess around with. And I'm not talking like on a physical thing. I'm just saying mentally, because when you go to work out, you know, you're going to experience pain and you push through it and you do it. Mm -hmm. As soon as someone experienced pain in life or business, they fold like cheap chairs. That's the problem. But how did I get so weird? Honestly, I've always been weird, man. I've always like, I think back to like middle school, I used to be the first one online all the time to go out to recess because I used to love, you know, obviously playing sports. And I literally remember I won an award for being the first one online every single day, Jeff, every day. And like a lot of people used to at the time be like, you know, they used to like, you know, bust my chops about it. But I think about it like, that's pretty amazing. Like, that's actually really amazing. Like, I love that I was, I, I would just always, I used to go to the gym Okay. I still, to this day, don't understand why I used to do this. I had nothing to do all day, but I, I thought it was necessary to get up at three in the morning and bike four miles to the gym. You know, I started working at a young age and then bike back another four miles, total eight miles. And I had nothing to do all day, but that's when I would do it. And I would do it every single day, no matter what. I just, I don't know, man. I just, when I get a desire you know, and that's why I came up with the whole concept of fueling your drive. I don't know when I have a desire, I just, I, I, I just, and, and I don't do it for anyone but me, you know, like obviously there's, there's now nah, I have my family now, but I'm talking about back in the day. It's just, I can't, I, I honestly can't really answer you. I've just always been different, <laughs> always been different. Hey, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to let you know, you can get a free copy of my book, The Millionaire Shortcut, which shows you the fastest way to become a millionaire in the new economy. And there's a special link just for this episode in the description. 
Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. So let's let's talk about that. And by the way, I have to share with you that. Every, so my wife and I, we go stay at the Wynn in Las Vegas probably once or twice a month. It's like our home away from home. I and every time I go there, I go take $100 and I put it on black. And right now, I think I've won like four times in a row. So I'm riding. And that's it. That's all the gambling I do. I just bet $100, one, one spin of the wheel. And I'm like four for the last four. So I don't know. I don't know red or black, man. I think I might be a black guy right now that sounds that's weird. fine that's yeah. fine man uh but uh but okay cool so so yeah this this idea of like the stuff that frazzles and even paralyzes and completely implodes other people somehow you have this you know i don't know if it's genius or blithe ignorance whatever like you're able to just not be rattled uh, how how does that work I mean, because i mean i'm not asking for me i'm asking for the millions of people that are like oh yeah, if well, i was just like that i could do so much more okay so how do you build a physique years and years and years and years of working out and being consistent okay how do you get a great haircut or a great style on your hair don't ask me because i'm bold and beautiful but my man jeff's got a nice head of hair but how do you do that you know you might have to change you might have to change your haircut a couple times you might have to you know tweak things you might grow it out not everything takes time okay i used to actually suffer from horrible anxiety horrible anxiety horrible and over the years i've learned how to deal and honestly endure pain and a lot of the things I do on a daily basis help me with that. And honestly, I use fitness as like my real key component to like, you know, like that sets my day straight. Like I torture myself. Like, like honestly, most people would end up in a, in a, in a hospital. Like they wouldn't be able to handle the things I do. Uh, and I'm talking mostly not just weight lifting weights, but I'm talking like on a cardio level. I really push myself. But these things have allowed me to be very calm. I, I honestly work very well in very difficult situations that's funny man i feel i feel like so much kinship with everything you're saying one of our uh, one of our core values at my company it used to be the first core value but i changed it because it was like it hit people too hard out of the gate and they like, didn't know what to make of it but our core value that we talk about constantly is we eagerly do hard things well and you said it at the very beginning of the interview you're like you're like i don't like all of it but i love doing hard things i think that's exactly what you said you know, Jeff, is a good point you just made. I'm going to be very, this is very, 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 very important. If something you're doing doesn't scare you, it's not right. Let's mm -hmm. put it like that. Every time before I work out, every time I'm scared. Before I jump in my ice bath every morning, I don't want to do it. I'm scared. I'm like, oh, Jesus. You know how cold it is jumping in a 25 degree water? Like, it's not even all water. It's like I'm piled in ice. Yeah. Your mind is the most powerful thing you have. People need to start training it more. That's it. It's very simple. And that's why I like doing things that I don't like to do. So I got to ask, because um, I've done ice baths. I did one a couple of weeks ago after a really hard leg workout. And, you know, I had to go to the store and I bought a bunch of bags of ice and dumped it in the tub. And it's like a whole ordeal. And I'm always like, go, go, go. I don't like, I, I'm, I want everything to be as efficient as possible. So I don't do ice baths because I don't have an efficient way to do it. So how do you do it? Do you have like a cold bath that's already cold or do you have somebody put the ice in for you or what's the I'm, I'm going to set you up. All right. Okay. I'm going to tell you exactly how you do it. Number one, you get a barrel. I have an ice barrel. Okay. For my guy, it's a, it's a full, like kind of uh it's, it's, it's just a huge barrel. Okay? okay. And I fill it up with water. I drain it out every two weeks. And I actually bought a commercial ice maker in my garage. Okay. I got it. I got it on Craigslist from a hotel. They were selling it. 400 pounds of ice. I had my, my, my guy come in, my plumber, hook everything up. I got the water line running. I got huge pipes so it doesn't even freeze in the winter. And literally every night I, I empty out a little bit of water. I have a line that I know I have to stop at because obviously when you go in, the water is going right. to obviously rise. And I, stu I stuff 400 pounds of ice in it every morning at 25 degrees. Yeah, so I'm uh, about to start building a new house, and I am 100% building that in my new house. Okay, so I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it because <laughs> in my in my next house I'm building, I already have that room set up. Okay. So ideally, I also do the sauna every day at 200 degrees. I love the sauna. Ideally, you're supposed to go from the sauna right into the ice bath. That's the best thing to do. But I'm going to have my sauna in my room. Now, in my ice bath section, 
you want to build a drain on the floor right below the tub so you could drain the water right in. Then right in the ceiling, I'm going to put a water valve so it could fill up the tub. So I solved my problems because when I have to drain it, I got to hook a hose up now. I got to bring it out to the street. Now it's cold, so it freezes, you know, part of the sidewalk. And but that's that's how I would set it up if you want my, my advice on it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I actually I'm literally while you're talking, this is probably totally poor form during an interview, but I'm <laughs> I have a, a note on my phone that I share with my wife. It's like all the stuff we want in our new house because we're yeah. working with the architect right now. I'm adding this to the list. Like yeah, so, right now. yeah, listen, so what you do, Jeff, is you build like, <laughs> so you have the barrel and you build like a little small, you know, um, um, like level, lower level in the floor. And then you put the, the, the you know, so mm -hmm. the water doesn't obviously come out of there. You put the drain right there. That's exactly what I'm doing when, my, when I build my next home. Oh, so good. So, good. yeah. And, I, you know, I like ice baths for all the health reasons. But honestly, it's more what you said. How long, how long do you stay in it? Three minutes every day. Then I, I naturally, you, ne you never want to jump right into a hot shower. You want your body to naturally warm up. Okay. Then I go into a hot shower and then I actually finish again with a cold shower for three minutes. And so you do, do that first, you do that in the morning? I do it after my workout. So you get up early, work out, and then come home, do the ice bath. Yeah, I'm up at 344. I'm in, I'm in, I'm working out around 415. I come back and, and then I only, I'm only training five days a week on the days I'm not training. I'm a big ice hockey player, so I play hockey, but still on the days I'm not training, the first thing I do is I jump in my ice bath right away. So if somebody's listening to this going, this is boring. Why don't they talk about how to build a business and make money? I want to just stop and say, we are talking about how to build a business and make money because this you is are. how you have to be. 100%, 100%. To endure what it takes. Because if you can't spend three minutes in an ice, ice bath, I promise you can't look down the barrel of an overdrawn bank account and your first five employees that you have to meet payroll on Friday and just figure it out. Listen, I've had more negatives and more non-sufficient funds in my bank account than sunny days in the Caribbean, okay? Everything we're talking about is extremely important to running a business because if you can't handle it, you're never going to make it. You know how many businesses actually fail within their first couple of years that never even succeed? I, actually, on a, uh, talking in franchise statistics, you know how many franchise brands franchise their company and never sell one? Huh, Almost 45%. 45% really? of people franchise their business and never sell one, Jeff. One. And it's and it takes a lot of time and money and investment to create the franchise, just to do the legal work to create a franchise structure. Correct. Yes. So 45% of the people who take the time and energy and spend the money to do that never even sell a franchise. Never even sell one. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't so I didn't know the stat. But that only only five percent, only five percent. No, excuse me, four percent make it over 500 locations. And I will be in that 4%, just so you know, FYI. Um, yeah, and so so when did you sell your first franchise unit? In 2014. Uh, it was the first time I took a vacation with my wife right before we had our first child. And uh, I was super nervous. I never left the business. That was the first time I left it. It was Christmas week. I'm on vacation. I love brownies. I had a plate of brownies at this buffet line. Like I must've had 40 brownies in this plate. And this guy came up to me and said, you look like that and you're going to eat all those? I said, absolutely. I love my brownies and I work out hard enough to do it. And I'm on vacation. What do you do for a living? Oh, you know, I own this uh, personal training company. We just actually started the franchise. You know, my son would love this. Next thing you know, I'm FaceTiming his son. Two weeks later, we closed the first franchise. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, and you're how many, how many franchises now? We're over 250 locations now. We service 700 cities in the United States. We operate in the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom. That's so cool, man. I just, I, I never, I never tire of these stories. And there, here's the thing. You're amazing, but there's also thousands of you. There's millions. Oh, so, like, there's dude. so many. I think the world needs to hear this. There, like, there, you know, there's 1,700. I mean, this is in the intro to the show. There are 1,700 new millionaires created every single day in the United States. Listen, I, I, you know, I just had um, Grant Cardone on my podcast. We just did an episode last week. Yeah. Dude, I love that guy, man. He's, a, he's just awesome. He's just, he, he, like, I told him, like, energy-wise, I know he's obviously older than me, but I was like, you know, you're going to have a problem keeping up my energy. We were just talking. It's funny. But, like, I just think of, like, you and these other people that I've, I've spoken to. We're all the same. All of us. 
all of us. Yeah. Some might be a little low, less low key. Some might not have the energy, and that's, but we're all the same. Everything in here is exactly the same. And like when you associate with people like that, and when you're with people who are smarter than you, because if you think you have all the answers, you are wrong. I don't have all the answers. Jeff doesn't have all the answers, but I'll tell you one thing. We're definitely good at something and we focus on that. People tell me they want to focus on their weaknesses. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Focus on your strengths and delegate your weaknesses. That's how you scale and grow. And if you think perfection, you're trying to like, oh, I want this to, perfection never works in business, ever, ever. I'm, I'm so OCD, I'm crazy. But not, nothing's going to ever be perfect. I used to, Jeff, I used to, in my vans, I used to get crazy if they weren't perfect. Like, this wasn't put to the side. This, I, and I, and I, and I, over years, I've learned, like, this is crazy. Like, I used to call the trainer as soon as the van would turn on. Can you imagine how annoying that is? But you have to learn these things. You have to do these things and learn and get feedback. Like, if someone leaves my company, which happens, right, it's going to happen. I literally, they call it an exit interview. I'll take them to dinner. I will make sure we're on good terms. And I want to know everything because that is how you grow. And that's how you learn from mistakes. So you talk about your, your people, people come, people go, let's talk about your people. So what, what sort of processes or standards do you have in place for vetting Who's going to be a good fit for you? Cause I got to imagine as franchises go, yours is pretty attractive, right? The cost is lower. Yep. The, it's, it's easier to get clients than, you know, the traditional franchise brick and mortar model. Like, so you probably have, I assume you don't take everyone, right? No, no we so What not. are your, what's your vetting process? What, what's going to make a good entrepreneur for you? Yep. So number one, you have to be driven. Okay. You have to be a motivated individual and you have to be understanding that you're going to get a little dirty, right? Um, you know, we've gotten better. And what I've actually done now is we actually have characteristics of who we're looking for. And people actually take this profile test that I've created that really kind of aligns. And there's, there's three different buckets. And if they're not in one of those buckets, we won't even move forward with them anymore. You know, but one test that I've always done from day one is would I have this person over my house for dinner? Yeah. And would I let them watch my children? And if one of those answers is no, I literally honestly will not move forward. I will not move forward with them. Just won't. And I, I have done that since day one and I've, I've had a tr extreme success with it. See, the thing that people don't understand is culture wins over everything. And if you don't have values and culture in your organization, you will fail miserably miserably. That's what fuel your drive is. You can't drive without fuel, fuel, four pillars of success, fun, unity, earnings, and leadership. You don't have fun in your business. You're going to be living in that 85% of people driving the work, committing spiritual suicide. Mm -hmm. Teamwork makes the dream work. No unity. It's never going to work. If you're not making money, it's not going to work. And if you are not a leader, if you call yourself a boss, it's not going to work. Drive, determination, respect, integrity, versatility, and excellence. Those are our values. Every single person has to align and embody those values. If they don't, it will never work. And I have stuck to this process from day one and have had extreme success with it. You know, you talk about how kind of we're all the same. It's funny, this, this idea of culture and values and, you know, mission, right? Let's these kind of this cluster of words. My experience is that a lot of people, when you start talking about that stuff, they kind of glaze over. Yep, they do. But when you start talking to people that have successfully scaled businesses, they, they lean in. They get excited because they actually know that's the DNA of, of what it takes. Um, and you talked about values. You know, we lean on, I mean, I have, I, you can't see it right up there. It's just out of field of view. I have my, our core values and our mission and vision statement framed on the wall. Every single, not only our, our staff, but every even one of our customers, we have them printed out. It's an online platform. We have them printed out put it somewhere in their house where they're going to see it every day. Cause if you're going to be one of our customers, you're not even going to be a good customer for us if you don't share our values. And true. Um, so it's, it's so true. You know, I, I love what you said about of, of these various attributes that, you know, you said, would I have them over to my house? Would I let them watch my kids? Uh, Warren Buffett said this really amazing thing that I think about all the time that when he's hiring, he said, I look for three things. He said, I look for intelligence, drive or, or i think you said intelligence work ethic and integrity but of those three the most important by far is integrity integrity yep. because if somebody doesn't have integrity you don't want them to have intelligence and work ethic you actually want them to be lazy and dumb it's very 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 true listen right skill can always be taught attitude can't so 
Did you have anybody that influenced you along the way? Somebody that was pivotal to sort of cultivating this way of being, this attitude that you've got? My grandfather, my grandfather, someone who I'm very, very, who I was very, very close with. Um, but I've also seeked out the best mentors in the game. So I've been mentored by, you know, some of the, the most successful people in the world that run billion dollar companies. And that was something that I did from day one. Everyone's sitting in these seminars with people who are, you know, kind of up and coming. I was going hunting. I've been mentored by Fred DeLuca. May he rest in peace, the founder of Subway. Um, good friends with Mr. Uh, Phil Knight. That's a story yeah. I could share. Um, I, I've, 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 I broke bread with a lot of big time people and, um, you know, everyone's always loved my energy and I'm a very good storyteller. And without those two things, you're going to have lots of problems. Energy is contagious and I've always had energy. And some people might think, you know, I'm crazy or weird, but I'm me. And I don't care what anyone else has to say because what it works for me works for me. And that's what I do. But, you know, I've learned obviously, and I've shortcutted a lot of, a lot of big mistakes by aligning with those people. And that's why I believe it's very important to align yourself with people of what you're looking to do and mentoring them and to surround yourself with other great people like Jeff and other people that have, have done success because you, you can always learn. And I like to learn every day. Honestly, people like to waste a lot of time in their day. When I'm showering, I'm listening to a podcast. I'm listening to an audio book. When I'm dry, I am always learning, always because I don't have all the answers. I will, eat, I will literally listen to books that I think I know everything about just to get one nugget out of it. That's it. Just one nugget. You have to be filling your, your mind constantly. And honestly, I'm most creative when I'm working out. That's when like my best ideas yeah. come to me and I'm constantly on my phone jotting things down. Yeah, my, my company that I have now, which is by far the fastest growing, most successful <clears throat> venture I've ever been involved with, um, I started it I conceived of it on a long run. I was out running. I was listening to Blue Ocean Strategy, a uh, great book. And I kind of had my own Blue Ocean epiphany. And I was like, oh, personal development, marketing training, entrepreneurial education, take it to the level of like a Harvard or a Yale. And like, just, it just seemed so obvious, but it was, all, it was the endorphins and the, the flow of energy that comes from exercise that made this obvious idea appear. Um, you talk about energy. And by the way, I have to tell you, you mentioned Phil Knight. I, two weeks ago, I finished Shoe Dog. Oh, dude. And I'm don't like, get, don't, don't get me. So, so, so I'm Phil speechless. Knight, dude. Phil Knight, hold on. So I'm very close with Mr. Knight. That's Phil Knight. Just do it. I have a canvas signed by him. Um, I'm actually having dinner with him in a couple of months once COVID passes. Really? Um, wow. I've never read a book in my life. Ever. I only listen to audiobooks. My ADD is crazy. I can't sit still. I've actually read this book 10 times. This is the greatest it's business so book. This is the you want to you want to you want to go into business? Yeah. Read this book. Read that book. Read this book. It is the greatest book ever. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. I, and I'm not a guy, Jeff, who's like obsessed with athletes or wearing jerseys, but I am obsessed with Mr. Phil Knight. And um obsessed with him, obsessed with him. And I did something, I I did something to him that I can't talk about because, you know, we're under a strict uh, NDA, but, you know, his assistant Lisa said in 36 years of working at Nike, no one's ever approached Mr. Knight this way that he termed remarkable and special. And the package I sent him, they said, you're lucky if you'll get something back within a year. I got it back in seven days. And like, honestly, I have to tell you, like I was shaking and I had goosebumps because I couldn't even believe it because like, that man is such an inspiration and that guy's lived more than half his life in debt and has had the craziest journey ever. And the first question I'm going to ask him when I see him is what did you do when you took out all the money from all the stores for payroll? Cause he had to pay. I forgot. I was, uh, what's his name? The guy from Japan. He owed him a million dollars. Yeah. And the guy and, from tiger tiger. Yes. He owed him a million dollars yeah. and he cleaned out every single bank account and payroll bounced on Monday. I want to know what he did. Like, what did he do? Because he had no money. And what about when Adidas and Converse like rallied the government to impose yeah. that customs yep. tariff on him and he suddenly gets served? He's like, oh, you owe $25 million. Yeah, and 25 he was doing million, like, yep. like three or four million a year at the time in revenue. Yep. Like it was that, that book. I'm so, I'm so excited to be talking to someone that like got that book like I did. It is so, and I had no idea. I'm like, Dude. oh, it's a memoir by a guy that made a shoe company. No, 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 no. It oh is. Oh my God. It is honestly, <laughs> this book has honestly helped me through very difficult times because I used to, I would just say to myself, 
listen, man, Phil did it. I could do it. You know, Phil did yeah. it. I could do it. You know, he, he's gone through it. And um, I just think about how different the times were then compared to now. Mm-hmm. Like think about like the advantage of just what's available to you now compared to then. But Phil Knight is an icon, man, icon. And I got a lot of respect for that, man. Well, yeah. I mean, imagine like now if you had an idea like, oh, I'm going to import shoes from Japan, you'd go online and you'd do that. Yep. He had to, he was like a 22 year old kid. He had to fly, fly to Japan, there. borrow the yep. money from his dad, yep. go, go to Japan. And this was like 1960 something. Like it was still tense between the U S and Japan. It yep. wasn't like yep. me yep. going into Japan now. And they just want me to spend money in the Ginza shopping district. Like it was weird. Very weird. It was, Oh, it's so good. Anyway, I, it, this show is about you, not him, but like <laughs> I'm, I totally get it. Man. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Um, in fact, I'm going to Eugene next month. I have a meeting with a, a company in Eugene and I have this like secret. I was like trying to scheme, like how could I like maneuver into like meeting and I haven't come up with a plan, but whatever. Um, yeah, I'm just, I was super inspired by that book. So, okay. Um, you mentioned him as a mentor. Oh yeah. Sorry. I got so into the Phil Knight thing. I lost my track of thought, but you were talking about energy. Like you're a high energy guy. You said I have energy and I'm a storyteller. So first, obviously storytelling is story selling. You're selling yourself, you're selling your product, yeah. you're selling your vision, like whatever. You can't sell stories. You, you can't sell crap, probably. That's, that's yes. a probably true, state, true enough statement to just make. But you talk about energy. And I think this energy thing is a real um, point of confusion for a lot of people. Because I get the same thing. People are like, Jeff, you have so much energy. I get up at 3.30 every morning. I usually don't get, I mean, I just love what I do. I don't, I don't go home, to quit working until six or seven a lot of times. And I just, like I'm, I'm on it and I love it and I live it and I wouldn't want it any other way. Mm-hmm. People act like I have some gift. We, I, I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure Einstein explained to us that we're all made of energy. Yep. You don't have more energy than I do. Either one of us, you could hook us up to a, a power station and we could like power New York City for 12 years or whatever the, the statistic is. We all have the energy. Yep. Some people just manage it really well and they feed it really well. And they resist or reject anything that dilutes their energy. You clearly are that person. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I want to dispel the idea that it's just some gift you were born with. It's all right here. That's it. I don't drink coffee. I don't take any like caffeine. I don't, I don't, I've never, I've never, I've never actually drank coffee in my life. I've never been drunk in my life. Actually. I've never even smoked a cigarette. I've never touched anything. We eat nothing. Mm-hmm. I've never touched a drug in my life, but um, it's in your mind. It's in your mind. If you want to be tired, you'll be tired. If you want to have energy, you'll have energy. But let's do this, right? You're having a meeting with someone and you're trying to bring them on your team. Hey, how you doing? I want to tell you about Jim Guys. You know, it's a, you know, it's a company and we're growing real fast. And, um, you know, it's exciting. Hey, how you doing? I'd love to tell you about this amazing opportunity with Jim Guys. Let me tell you, we're growing like crazy. Um, not to sound insensitive, COVID's been the most beneficial thing to our business model. Currently, we're operating. You see the difference? Oh, yeah. There's a very, very big difference there. Here's the problem. I have always been my biggest fan because no one is going to root for you in the early days. People are going to laugh at you, slam their face, slam your face right indoors. I used to reach out to people and they would ignore me and not pay attention to me until I started actually building something credible. More people started paying attention to me, but you have to work on your energy and you have to work on your confidence because if you're not your biggest fan and you're not going to pick yourself up when you get down or separate when you have those voices in your head that are telling you those negative thoughts, you're not going to excite other people to believe in your vision. And it all starts with a vision. That's why you have to have your vision. So energy, vision, all this stuff ties in together. But sales is what it comes down to. You have to be a good storyteller because I could sell anything to you, anything. But I do it I do it in the right way of obviously telling a story. And you have to tell a story. And that's why energy is very important. And when you move your body every day, when you jump in ice baths, going 200 degree saunas, these things are all great for your body. It wakes your body up. You need to be active. And that's why, you know, I like to say I'm like fine wine. I only get better with age. I, uh, I, I love, yeah, I mean, I think so much too is this being unapologetic about sales. Maybe that's just fresh on my mind, but because I got some, you know, snarky comment on YouTube earlier. Uh, I, I think it actually might have been my interview with, with Evan, it was like, oh, you know, it was one of my good interviews. And somebody was like, 
these people are just, um, you know, don't listen to these people. They're just good salesmen that love to take your money. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, do you have a job? Yeah. Does that job pay you? Does that business thus make money with which to pay you? Does that business not make that money by selling things? Like what business on earth has money to pay its employees that where nothing's getting sold? When I don't know when sales became such a bad thing. Sales is everything, man. Everything. 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 You're selling yourself every single day. And if you don't if you don't believe in yourself and you can't sell yourself, then no one else is going to believe in it. If you're not confident in yourself, and you're not excited and your biggest fan, no, you're not gonna be able to sell anything. So start with yourself. So uh, I know that I, I think you've got a, another uh, something coming up in like one or two minutes here. So I'm gonna wrap quickly. I'm gonna sure. ask you one quick question before, before uh, and then I want you to tell the world how they can come get to know more of you and, and lear learn from you. Um, for those who don't, for whatever reason, they don't have this confidence, right? They're struggling to find it. Uh, maybe they've got a lot of negative conditioning or, or baggage, whatever what do you counsel people as a place to start for building that confidence? Yep. You just start and start small, right? If you want to get active into fitness, start doing five pushups a day, start running for a half hour, 15 minutes. If you want to get into business and you want to start figuring out an idea, start putting thoughts together and start thinking about how you're going to start. But it starts with TA. You have to take action. Most people don't take action because what's going to happen is by the time you start actually thinking about it and you're procrastinating, someone like myself and Jeff are going to run circles around you so many times that it's going to be like the road runner and it's just going to be smoke everywhere and steam and, <laughs> and you know, everything from the road because I don't waste time. I don't waste time. I take action every single day and I'm consistent with it. So just take small steps to start. There you go. How can the world uh, come meet you and get to know you and follow you? They could do the same thing they do for you. You just go into Google, type in handsome and a picture of myself and Jeff come up. Yeah. No, but you, you could, you could uh, just type in Josh York GG. I'm on all social media channels. Some are Josh York, some are Josh York, York GG, Instagram. I'm Josh York GG. You can follow my podcast. You can go to joshyorkgg.com or you could type in gym guys. If you loved that episode, then you're definitely going to love this one. Check it out. I think Budo said, you know, uh, um, anyone can learn from their own mistakes. A wise man learns from the mistakes of others.